the closest I was, I think, to uh, losing my life and losing my ship was on our first convoy. We were about four hours out of Guantanamo Bay, Cuba, and our convoy was attacked. At that time, I was standing watch on the bridge. It was two o'clock in the morning and uh, I was scanning the ocean and suddenly I saw one fire in the water. Then I saw a second fire. Then I saw a third fire and it dawned on me that we're being attacked. At that third sighting of a ship, fire in the water, there was a huge explosion in front of our ship. There was a, a freighter, and uh, it was a humongous ball of fire, and there was three boom, 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 and then it started raining. And when it was raining, it wasn't exactly raining, it was debris from that ship that had uh, splashed over onto our ship and it rocked our ship and blew open some portholes. Uh, apparently, they were going after tankers, and fortunately, they hit the freighter in front of us instead of our ship. At that time, we were attacked by a wolf pack of uh, Nazi U-boats, and th they usually travel in, a, in sixes and they'll tail a convoy until that convoy reaches a certain area where they, I guess, rendezvous, and then they attack. Uh, they go under the convoy because this way, this, the uh, sound of their screws, their propellers, can't be detected because there are other ships that are part of the convoy. So that's one method that they use. Our tanker, Navy tanker, shot down two kamikazes in the Philippine campaign, the Battle of Lady Gulf. And uh, the, that was where we first witnessed kamikaze attacks. If you see some of the stock footage or film of some of the uh, uh, attacks by kamikaze. It's just like that and probably worse. The uh, big invasion, Okinawa, which we thought and hoped would be the end of the war. Uh, that campaign was also one of my most memorable days. We were the official yard oiler until uh, the island was secured, which was in August, and the Japanese surrendered.